The Curse Mark is one of the best and most iconic amps slash transformations in the entire series. For me at least, it is the coolest transformation in the show. Both the first and second stages look amazing in panel and Kishimoto does some very artistic designs with them. It's also an impactful power up for the users of the Curse Mark. The first time we see it being used, it's when Sasuke awakens the Curse Mark almost in the Forest of Death after Orochimaru kisses his neck. and then and he is casually dodging attacks that are literally the speed of sound because they are sound attacks, punching Zaku from behind, scaring Dosu, and even Neji when he was looking at Sasuke's power up there. So this was a completely different Sasuke from before, and it's just the first stage of the course mark and a baby stage at that, the first time he ever used it. He wasn't used to the power whatsoever. So you can see with this first introduction to the Jutsu that whenever a user learns how to to master this thing it's gonna be very strong we also see that whenever the curse mark is being used the person with the power of the curse mark gets a little bit insane and blood lusted sasuke was going after zaku that time very hard breaking his arm sakura had to plea for him so that he wouldn't destroy the guy and that's because of how the curse mark works orochimaru created this jutsu emulating the powers of jugo's clan they could collect the nature energy around them but in exchange change they do go a little bit crazy so Orochimaru created this jutsu so that he could implant on other people and they could do this thing as well the curse mark even consumes the body of the user taking everything away from it destroying it from within if you're not cautious that's why Sasuke was paralyzed several times when using the curse mark even in the first stage it's a dangerous power-up but one that can provide a lot of benefits if you can master it we see that only a a couple of characters were ever able to master the curse mark as well as Jugo could without, you know, the curse mark because that's his inherent power. Sasuke and Kimimaro, they were able to use partial second stage transformation, something that Jugo acknowledges the first time he sees Sasuke using it. Oh, you can use that too? That's rare. You can use my thing very well here. And in order to master the second stage, you have to eat a pill that will release your body into the stage and quote unquote kill you. That's that's the process Sasuke underwent whenever he was leaving the village. With the sound 4 and when the ritual was completed, Sasuke had a much better mastery over the curse mark and he was able to enter the second stage. Now it is stated by Sakon and Jirobu that the second stage of the curse mark gave them 10 times their normal strength. Well, so a 10 times amp is nothing to scoff at, however, it's not as clear cut as you may think because this is a flat amp and not a power multiplier. Characters like the Sound 4 and Sasuke, yes, they got 10 times more powerful because, relatively speaking, they're not that strong compared to the top tiers of the verse. Hebi Sasuke, on the other hand, in the beginning of Naruto Shippuden, up until midway through Naruto Shippuden, when he could still use the curse mark, whenever he used the second stage, it was just a little buff, but he definitely didn't get 10 times more powerful. And that's because Sasuke in base had become much more powerful than his counterpart in Naruto Part 1. I mean, it would be kind of ridiculous if it gave 10 times the strength to any character that had the curse mark. Imagine if Madara or Hashirama got the curse mark, for example. Would they get 10 times more powerful? No, it wouldn't make much sense. But it's still an important amp for any character that receives it, regardless. Now, the interesting thing about the curse mark, stage 2 primarily, is that it can grant very unique abilities depending on the user. So let's go through everyone that we've seen using the second stage of the curse mark and analyze their new abilities after they drawn that particularly dangerous power. Starting off with Jirobo, and Jirobo is kind of the exception here because as far as we can tell, he doesn't do anything different with the second stage of the curse mark. Now, obviously he gets much stronger, he's able to lift Choji's massive body using his complete expansion jutsu very casually, but he doesn't use any jutsus that you would think he would be uncapable of in base or in the first stage of the curse mark there's nothing he gains with the second stage except for strength and physical capabilities i mean maybe he could have done something different but choji just didn't let us see it because he destroyed the guy beforehand when we move on to kido maru however things begin to change because he goes through a transformation first he creates that massive bow of his that he uses to shoot neji with and the thing we have to understand here is that kido maru 
Kuro decides to go to the stage 2 when he realizes his attacks weren't dealing enough damage to Neji. Kiromaru secreted that weird fluid that turned into those golden weapons of his and he was tossing those knives at Neji, but they weren't piercing through Neji's defense enough. I mean, a couple of them damaged him, but they weren't fatal wounds, so Kiromaru had to do more damage. Now, maybe because the second stage of the curse mark provides him a massive amp to his chakra reserves, he's able to create that large bow and massive arrows that he shoots at Neji, and maybe he wouldn't be able to do that in base or in the first stage of the curse mark because he was just using the knives. But I think it has much more to do with Kitomaru's amp strength. If you don't know, shooting powerful bows is very hard and it requires a lot of strength. The higher the draw weight of the bow, the more powerful the bow will be, but also the more difficult it will be to draw it. And we can see Kitomaru's bow is extremely powerful. The arrow is destroying the entire forest until it gets to Neji, and the arrow pierces through Neji's body, completely opening a hole in him. So a very interesting possibility is that Kitomaru is not strong enough to draw the bow in base or in the first stage of the curse mark, so he has to use the second stage to use that most powerful attack of his. And we can see in the first panel, Kitomaru prepares the bow shot. He's actually leveraging himself with the trees and his web so that he can actually draw the bow to its maximum capacity. It's a great looking shot, but it implies this is a very heavy ball to draw. And it's the exact power he needs to defeat Neji. More damage, more piercing capabilities. Also, Kitomaru acquires a third eye, much before he was cool with the Rinna Sharingan, and I have to assume this eye gives him better aim. I mean, the guy had pretty good aim. He was only missing for a couple of inches because Neji was using his chakra to deflect the arrows ever so slightly, but he was not gonna miss if Neji wasn't doing anything. And this second stage transformation is just so cool. I mean, Kitomaru is an underrated character, and Kitomaru versus Neji is one of the greatest fights in Naruto Part 1 and even in the entire series. Now, moving on to Sakon, he does use a couple of abilities that he didn't use in base. And this is really Sakon and Ukon, but they're kind of the same character, however their abilities kind of change in the second stage. So they first enter the second stage when their bodies are still together, and then Kiba uses his massive two-headed hound attack to shear Sakon and Ukon in half, and you think, okay, Kiba won. But no, both Sakon and Ukon kinda create this half for each of their bodies, it's that dark, scaly skin that seems like a reptile or something, so they can both move freely from each other and attack Kiba from different positions. Still, we saw beforehand that Sakon and Ukon could split their bodies when the Sound 4 was attacked by the Konoha rescue squad, but Ukon had to return pretty quick to Sakon's body, so it's implied that with the second stage activated, they can remain separated for longer and they can actually regenerate the half of their body bodies with that strange dark skin thing. Also when Ukon gets hurt, or it's Sakon, I don't know, one of them gets hurt and then they return to the other's body to rest. So yeah, it's very much implied the second stage allows them to stay separate for longer. Also, the Jutsu Sakon slash Ukon uses on Kiba to fuse his body with his, so that Kiba's forced to stab himself with the kunai to damage Sakon in return, is also used in the second stage of the curse mark. Now, would Sakon slash Ukon be able to use that jutsu in base? I actually don't think so because he would probably have to be separate from the other's body to enter someone else's body. I mean, can you imagine the two brothers entering someone? That would be even more weird than the jutsu already is. I don't think it's possible. I think you can only quote-unquote infect one host at a time, so you kind of need the second stage by default because that's the only way you can stay away from your brother for a longer period of time. So the body invasion jutsu is probably something that needs the second stage, just like them being separated. They also summon the Rashomon with the second stage of the curse mark. Now, maybe they need the extra chakra from the curse mark to summon it, but I don't see why they would 
need the second stage to summon the Rashomon if it's not a chakra limitation, but still, they do that in the second stage. Moving on to Taiyuya, her second stage is a little bit strange. Now, she does get a lot of those horns that maybe she can use to attack other people in Taijutsu, but I don't really see that happening. First, because she's not really a Taijutsu fighter, and also, why would you attack with your head instead of trying to punch? And Taiyuya used the second stage much more to escape Shikamaru's shadow possession and resist it better because that provides her much more physical strength. However, there was a jutsu she only used when she entered the second stage, which was the Mugen Onsa Genjutsu, the flute genjutsu essentially that she used on Shikamaru, and then he sees his arm melting away and stuff like that, a lot of skulls in the genjutsu realm, and he uses his own shadow possession to break his finger and break himself out of the genjutsu by inducing pain. Now you may say that this is a stretch and that Tayuya would be able to use this genjutsu without the second stage of the curse mark, but then again I ask you, why didn't she use that before? Because it's a pretty powerful jutsu. Now of course she was using her flute to control her massive humanoid summons before and then Shikamaru controlled them, she had to unsummon them, but even still that was a powerful genjutsu. Shikamaru was only able to break out of it because it's pretty smart and you would think she would try to catch Shikamaru under that genjutsu when she still had her humanoids to attack him and finish the fight. So maybe the second stage of the curse mark granted her a boost in her chakra reserves, enabling her to use this powerful auditory genjutsu. Now in Naruto Shippuden, when Kabuto uses this genjutsu on Sasuke and Itachi through a very weird combination of his body with Tayuya's body, she does not seem to be depicting the second stage of the curse mark. However, that particular version of Kabuto is exponentially more powerful than Tayuya, and he was already using copious amounts of sage energy through his snake sage mode, giving him much more nature energy than the second stage of the curse mark could ever hope to give Tayuya. Still, we don't know for certain if she needs the second stage or not. She doesn't do much more in the second stage of the curse mark. I mean, she has this tug of war fight against Shikamaru's shadow possession for a time. Tamari then arrives, saving Shikamaru, and then she destroys Tayuya. But she doesn't use any other jutsus. So now let's move on to Kimimaro. Now, obviously, whenever Kimimaro uses the first and the second stages of the curse mark, he gains the ability to make more of those bones. For instance, it seems like the first stage of the curse mark grants him the ability to create that layer of bones underneath his skin to resist Gara's sand crush attack. Because if you think about it, when he starts fighting against Naruto and then Rock Lee in base, he only uses a single bone that's made into a knife that he uses to slash through the Naruto clones and then attack Rock Lee and even Drunk Fist Lee. But then when Lee is not drunk anymore and he tries to use the first gate trying to kick and blitz Kimimaro for the primary Lotus, he awakens a bit of his first stage of the curse mark and bones come out of his chest to block Lee's attack. Meaning that the more nature energy he draws from the curse mark, the more bones he'll be able to use with his body. And naturally when he enters the second stage, this is exponentially more so. Now first he gets much more physically powerful as always because he simply shrugs off Gara's sand coffin very casually and he gains several horns and bones all around his body on top of a large tail which he uses to offend Gara. Now he breaks through Gara's sand shield kinda using his bones to attack him. Not, not the bones that he pulls out of his body but the ones from the curse mark itself and then he uses his tail to slap Rock Lee. So yeah, he's using his new appendages very well in the fight. But he can also create insanely large weapons with his bones. First, he removes his entire spinal column in a very creepy way, which he uses as a lasso kinda to wrap around Gara. And then he creates that massive bone spear that he uses against Gara's Shukaku shield. It ends up losing to the shield and the bones, they essentially disintegrate, but it's still pretty powerful. And those are attacks in a different scale from what he was doing before in base. Like, he was just using a bone knife before, and now he's, well, pulling a lot of bones on his body. But that's not all, because the most impressive attack Kimimaro uses in that fight, and that's insanely
really OP. It's implied that something Kimaru wouldn't be able to do all the time because otherwise he would probably done that before. It's maybe a last ditch move because it probably consumes a lot of chakra and it's gonna be the forest of bones that Kimimaro uses after Gara had buried him under the sand like hundreds of meters down. All those massive bones covered the entire battlefield almost killing Gara and Lee in the process. It was pretty insane. And not only that, but Kimimaro can also move freely through those bones. Like imagine if Kimimaro wasn't sick here. This jutsu would be insanely OP. You would create a terrain completely favorable to you if you didn't kill the target already when you first erupt the bones out of the ground and then you can just travel through them if you didn't to strike from any side that you want and that's what Kimimaro was about to do to Gara and Lee but he literally died a second before he killed them. Naturally he had the second stage activated when he did that but there's something more strange. When he died his second stage curse mark remained activated at least for a while because when he dies we see the curse mark still there it doesn't retreat or anything like it so maybe he just remains like dead in death we don't see Kimimaro's body in base you could say so I think this is very much proof that Kimimaro needs the second stage of the curse mark to perform the forest of bones now moving on to Jugo and yes he doesn't have a curse mark his powers are inherent but it's essentially the same ability so I want to mention it here because Jugo's abilities are actually pretty cool as I mentioned before he can do partial transformations which are very useful when you want an extra boost in power but doesn't want to surrender yourself to the nature of the curse mark and get insane like Jugo does a lot of the time but the power he gets with the second stage is actually the most exotic one should I say he can create this weird propellers around his body to boost his attacks like he's gonna punch someone and then he creates a propeller on his elbow that boosts him and thrusts his arm forward creating large explosions with his punches alone. He used that against B and his punch is actually pretty powerful creating a small crater and lifting up a lot of dust. Also I have to imagine that he can use that to boost his own speed like putting rockets behind your back. Never does that but it would be interesting to see. But that's not all, no far from it. He can use those same quote unquote propellers to create a massive chakra cannon that explodes energy. He directs dozens of those cannons towards the Raikage when they were fighting and the explosion is actually pretty massive. Now it doesn't damage the Raikage because the guy is a freaking tank, but I would imagine this particular attack would kill 99% of the Naruto-verse. I mean Jugo seemed pretty sure he had killed the Raikage after he landed an attack. Jugo also seems to be able to create weird appendages with the curse mark stage 2 as well. For example he kind of creates a shield on his arm, a meat shield almost, <laughs> when the Raikage attacked him with a punch. Now the Raikage pierced through that shield and that's when Jugo used the cannon attack but he used that to defend himself. Jugo also creates an X head on his forearm and we see that the first time he fights in the series when he was exchanging some blows against Suigetsu's sword, he creates a blade on his arm showing a lot of control of the curse mark. And now let's move on to Sasuke who can also use partial transformations of the second stage that can be very useful. The first time we actually see him doing that was when Jugo attacked him in the prison when he was about to break Jugo out of it and he uses one of his curse mark wings to block the attack. Pretty cool. Speaking of which, when Sasuke uses the second stage he acquires two massive wings on his back that resemble demonic hands. We see this for the first time in the Valley of the End fight against Naruto and one of the most iconic battles of the series and definitely one of the most iconic shots when they clash their Chidori and Rasengan. Those wings allow Sasuke to fly or at least jump very high. We never see Sasuke maintaining a consistent flight with those wings because he doesn't use the curse mark for very long. He flies towards Naruto to clash Chidori and Rasengan and then he uses it against Deidara as well to fly a little bit but then he kind of loses a wing during that fight. Speaking of which, the wings can be used as literal meat shields to protect Sasuke from dangerous attacks. We see this against Jugo, as I mentioned before, but we also see this against Naruto in the Valley of the Inn. When Naruto attacks Sasuke with his mantle of the nine tails, he uses one of his wings to block Naruto's attack, and then he actually uses the wing to punch
punch Naruto back. You can also use that to attack too, which is pretty neat. And crucially, in the fight against Deidara, he uses the wing to tank a massive C2 explosion. And in the fight against Itachi, he tanks an Amaterasu with the wing, but you can argue Amaterasu would consume his entire body, but he substituted using Orochimaru's substitution style. So yeah, maybe the wing was useful to tank the initial blow of the Amaterasu, but the dark flames would probably spread around his entire body if he didn't substitute, but well, it was useful. And then he lost both his wings by that fight, which is disappointing. Well, first, Sasuke losing the curse mark at all is very disappointing already. He should have kept it. And second, he should have regenerated those wings. Like, the next time he used the second stage of the curse mark, he should just get the two wings back, man. They're very iconic and cool. You didn't just give Sasuke, like, one wing or no wings. But perhaps the coolest ability granted by the second stage of the curse mark to Sasuke is Onyx Chidori. This black and white form of the Chidori looks absolutely amazing both in the manga and in the anime, and it's one of the components of that iconic scene of the Chidori versus Rasengan. Now obviously this Chidori is implied to be much more powerful than a base Chidori, but we just don't know exactly by how much because that is literally the only time Sasuke uses that unfortunately, unless if you count the Onyx Chidori he uses when he acquires his Renegon in the war arc against Madara and he only uses that one time as well, and that's definitely not powered up by the curse mark because Sasuke doesn't have the curse mark anymore by that point in the story, but it is implied to be a more powerful variation too. I mean, I just like the dark Chidori vibe, and one of my disappointments with Naruto Shippuden, I mean, it's not a big deal, but I wish Sasuke had used the curse mark more often, and I wish his curse mark had scaled up with him, giving him a more powerful boost so we could see more Onyx Chidoris and stuff like that. I think it would have been very cool to see that. Naruto uses the Nine Tails' as transformation a lot during Naruto Shippuden. And yes, Nine Tails is more iconic than the curse mark, but I would argue the curse mark is an exceptionally iconic piece of the Naruto imagery as well, and it just fades away when Sasuke loses the jutsu in the fight against Itachi. Now, yeah, we see Jugo using that a couple of times afterwards, but I mean, Jugo has, what, five pages of screen time in the entire series? Wouldn't it have been more interesting to see Sasuke using his own curse mark to imbue his Susanoo with the curse mark when they're fighting Jubito instead of having Jugo come in and Sasuke Susano and using the curse mark like he looks very out of place in that particular fight like what's Jugo doing in there should have been Sasuke's power all along but regardless curse mark Sasuke is cool I love Onyx Chidori I like his wings a lot of people don't really like his curse mark design because it has quote-unquote lipstick and his hair gets too long and weird but I like the design it's really edgy but sometimes you gotta lean into the engine is if it's tastefully done. Like this video if you enjoyed it, watch this other video right here for more entertaining Naruto content, subscribe if you haven't done so already, please help me out with the YouTube algorithm, and thank you so much for watching guys.